am king of the band winner, Siri Lockhart. I am urging you to practice social distancing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Avoid large gatherings and if you have to stand in a line, make sure you are three feet apart from the other person. Get vaccinated today, protect yourself and be responsible. And I urge you, get vaccinated. It is safe and it is effective. Stop the spread, help the fight and make the choice that is right and let us unite and do the thing right. Man and woman, let us join in the fight. week's edition of Round Table Talk. Our special guests this evening are the Minister of Health, Sinclair Jimmy Prince. We also have joining us from Guyana, the Assistant Secretary General of CARICOM, and also a former Minister of Health here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Douglas Slater. Welcome, gentlemen. Of course, so much is Thank happening you. as far as COVID-19 is concerned both here and in the region. Let's start first, Minister, by telling us what exactly is our current position? Well, we, we've been trying to, let me just say um, good evening to um, all our listeners and so on. And Dougie, thanks for being with us today. Uh, our situation here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is that we, we have been going through a very curious period. Um, we only have 12 deaths. Um, we have about 35 or so uh, active cases. Um, however, at the same time, our vaccine uptake has been very slow. Uh, about 30,000 vaccinations um, done so far, about 19,000 first doses, 11,000 second doses. Um, that is not nearly enough. But as I said, the reason I say it's a curious situation is because we have been doing so poorly in terms of vaccinations, but yet we've been doing very well in terms of containing and suppressing the virus here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, I've been advised by the, the, the people who are in the Health Services Committee here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that there is a slight uptick recently that we are moving up a little bit in terms of absolute numbers and also in terms of positivity rate, but we have not gone over the threshold. We were within the, with about four, four up to, let's say, two days ago, um, four percent. Um, and in terms of absolute numbers, we've been moving up a little bit. We had 12 two days ago. I, I'm not sure what it is today. Uh, however, we've been trying um, our best to deal with this issue. Of course, you know of some of the measures that we have taken um, since we declared a public health emergency here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've even gone to Parliament to do some things. Uh, we have been very proactive. Um, for instance, we have amended the Public Health Act to protect our frontline workers and at the same time to protect the people whom they serve. Um, we have a number of health workers all over the country doing a commendable job. Uh, the CMO and the Medical Officer of Health along with the public health nurses have all banded together and are doing a, a very good job. So the situation here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is one which I think too many Vincentians are comfortable with because nobody is dying, nobody's getting really sick, and uh, people have been dropping their guards, in my opinion. And um, we have the problem of um, non compliance with mask wearing, of um, uh, so social distancing, etc. Uh, we'll be having that problem. It is kind of worrying to us uh, because sooner or later, when this thing really hits us, if it does hit us, it's going to hit us hard. Um, there's no sense we wait until we have a problem at the hospital or the health centers, etc. People dying and sick, being, getting, getting sick, that we should rush to talk about vaccination. And so there's a lot of disinformation, misinformation, conspiracy theories out there, and people, too many people are taking heed of that. But I think we are managing well at the moment, but we need to do better, especially in terms of the vaccinations. Okay, I want to talk some more about the amendments to the Public Health Act because that seems to be quite um, an issue that um, has not been 
well understood. But before we do that, I want to weigh in. Um, Dr. Slater, your, your comments, your thoughts, your analysis of not just the situation um, nationally, but from a regional standpoint. Thank you, Thierry. Um, Minister Prince, listeners, good evening to all. It's a pleasure to be joining in this conversation because of its importance. Um, not only Vincent and the Grenadines, this is my homeland, but to the region, CARICOM, which I represent in this session, uh, and the world. I want to firstly um, echo some of the sentiments expressed by the minister to give um, kudos to the public health care workers or the health care workers in general, who have been doing a marvelous job um, carrying out and um, also guiding the policymakers, that's the government, as to how to manage the COVID-19 disease. However, when I look on the figures regionally, we are not in a good place. That is the region, CARICOM. And certainly, I am sometimes a little um, uncomfortable when I see St. Vincent towards the bottom of the, the line in CARICOM um, with the rates of uptake of vaccine, the vaccination rates. And I want to warn that we must not um, feel too secure that right we have the public health workers have done a magnificent job in maintaining low rates of infection and the death rate but that can change overnight and we don't have to look too far to see examples of that within the region our next door neighbor Grenada was very doing excellently and then bang so too St. Kitts and some other countries. And yet nearby, we have countries that have really gone way out of control too, like St. Lucia. We know that there are interactions between our member states, St. Lucia, and it just requires a little slip. And I must say that I am very concerned and I would imagine that the minister and the health professionals are too, that Delta variant with its high level of infectiousness can and almost certainly will hit us hard soon. And we can find a situation where our healthcare services can be overwhelmed. So that is not a scare tactic is not um, trying to scare persons, but it's the reality. And it's better to be to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And the best way of being forearmed and be prepared, I think the best tool is vaccination. But we also have to maintain the other public health measures like proper use of masks. And quite frankly, from the, um, from I was home about a few weeks ago and I wasn't impressed by the level of use of masks, and I don't know if it has improved, I doubt, but we are playing with Trump, to put it, to put it simply. So um, we have a big problem regionally, um, but this program focused mainly on St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and for what it's worth, I'd like um, our citizens to really get a proper understanding of what we are being confronted with. I, I think we have not gotten there yet, over for now. Okay, Minister, you described what we are going through now here as a curious period. Uh, tell me why, why you describe it as, as, as curious. Because we, we, the way we are behaving on the streets, um, in, in uh, entertainment spots, all of us in business and awareness, um, does not reflect what is happening in terms of our, our positivity rate and, and people getting sick, etc. Um, I thought that because we were, we were doing so badly with respect to the vaccinations, that the situation would have been worse, you know. 
I think um, this is due, of course, this situation is due because we have been, we have a good quarantine isolation um, program. Um, we detect, we test, uh, we, we, we isolate quickly. Uh, and we started this thing long time. There's a, a cadre of people out there who are experienced, etc. And um, but I don't think this is going to last too long. And um, the people generally, people generally are saying, what, what is the big deal? That is what I call it. Curious. What is the big deal? All over the world, people are dying. Um, health workers are dying. Um, other other workers, um, families are losing loved ones, etc. But yet we in Saint Vincent are sitting back and and arguing. We are very aggressive in terms of our resistance um, to, to the information that we're giving them. Um, some people are just basically ignorant of what is happening. Of course, I understand that part. Uh, some people have other reasons, religious reasons. Um, just name it. All right. So there is a, a, a confluence of a lot of things that come in together. And, and, and I, I think that sooner or later, as Dougie said, we're going to be suffering for it. Um, Dougie, tell us some more about, from a medical standpoint, your medical background, tell us about the dangers in respect of the Delta variant. Well, I, I, I would like to um, let us move forward with some what is accepted, general established facts. COVID-19 disease exists. Millions of persons, almost 5 million people have died from it. And more than 95% of those persons who have died from it were unvaccinated. These are undeniable facts. We have several vaccines that are clearly very useful. At first, one, preventing serious illness and death. And people must remember that always the scientists said the vaccine that was the first function of the vaccines. It also helps to slow down the transmission rate. The Delta variant, I'll tell you personally, up to about six weeks ago at my workplace, we were actually starting to put in place um, plans to return to the office because we work from home mainly. And I myself, I can tell you, I've been in, interacting with various member states the, at the, te the technical and political level. And I, even with Simmons and the Grenadines, I was trying to say, man, we might be able to ease up some of the restrictions soon. Mm -hmm. Then came Delta. Yep. And I can tell you that Delta is dangerous. It's not by accident probably that the two dangerous and Delta start with D. I'm not dangerous, although my name is Doggett. <laughs> and seriously speaking, the Delta various, for example, the, um, the original and most of the other variants took an average of five to seven days from the exposure of a patient to start seeing illness or even testing positive. The Delta variant, is down to two days. It is several times more infectious than the other variants. There's a factor we call the R naught. And it is a factor which says how many persons may be infected from one person. Most of the other variants was like one person will infect two. The Delta variant has been found to infect between six to eight persons. Now that is an exponential um, possibility you're putting there. Um, and that is worrying. Several people are dying and plenty of people will die if we do not try and break mm -hmm. this, this, this chain of infection. And I'll tell you, every time a virus enters an vaccinated new person, there is, or any person for that matter, there is a risk of it changing or mutating. There is a change to something that is worse. If you permit me to use colloquialism, it gets better. Now, 
I will just um, let you know. Um, Doc, Doc, hold that point. Mm -hmm. I will, we will come back right after this break. We will okay. continue after this All break. Right. I am Hans John, 2019 Vinci Raga Sokomuna. I took the COVID-19 vaccine and so should you. Let's be an example to others. Get vaccinated today and help control the spread of COVID-19. Vaccinate if you want to eliminate the spread of the virus in our place and do not procrastinate. But rather let us vaccinate. Get vaccinated today. Friday, September 3rd, there'll be thousands of dollars to be won. A lotto jackpot of $90,000. A new home, car, or that college education. Lotto, you have to be in it to win it. Next lotto jackpot, $90,000. Coming up on the VC3 News Update. Persons hoping to have events and wish to exceed the amount for indoor or outdoor gatherings must seek approval from the CMO or the Commissioner of Police. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has received a shipment of personal protective equipment procured through funding from the European Union. And the Ministry of National Mobilization with responsibility for social protection of the poor and vulnerable launches its social protection policy consultation process. We'll have these stories and more coming up at 7 p.m. on the VC3 News Update. I am King of the Band's winner, Thierry Lockhart. I am urging you to practice social distancing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Avoid large gatherings, and if you have to stand in a line, make sure you are three feet apart from the other person. Get vaccinated today, protect yourself, and be responsible. And I urge you get vaccinated it is safe and it is effective stop the spread help the fight and make the choice that is right and let us unite and do the thing right man and woman let us join in the fight Welcome back. When we took our first break, um, Dr. Slater, I think, was um, talking about uh, variants and, and how they mutate, Doc? Yes, and um, as I was saying, the Delta variant is a bad fellow. But if you think that is bad, just today we received some information from the WHO that they are keeping eyes on a new variant called the MU, M-U, and that one, the reason why they are concerned is that it has the potential of um, changing up so much that it can escape any of the vaccines we have right now. Now, I'm not saying that that is definitely so yet, but that's the potential. And that's the risk we are running. Now, I overheard a little of the conversation about and um, persons with reasons why they don't want to vaccinate. And uh, it reminded me of an, an, a, a little in, um, incident that happened while I was home. Now, we understand that there's some hesitation. Some people genuinely don't quite understand, but frankly, I don't think there are very many like that. I believe there have been, there, there's a lot of information out there the Ministry of Health and other persons have tried to inform and educate. On TV, there's a lot of information, but some people just choose not to listen to the right news. For example, I was in a bank and there was a lady saying, well, it's only God and Jesus could tell them that they depend on God and Jesus and not the man. And I had to hold back and say, well, I'm not the most religious of persons. 
But I asked her, um, and God had to tell them to take the vaccine. I said, well, I'll ask God to talk to you and tell you do something. Then <laughs> she chuckled. I said, yeah. I said, do you believe that God gave scientists and doctors the inspiration to help to cure you from other things that you used to go to doctor for before COVID? And her answer was yes. I said, so why you think God don't change like that? Why you think he changed now that you have something even worse than them? Why you think you change from giving that same inspiration? So I tried to explain that is what has happened with the doctors and the scientists. Some people will say how well it developed so fast. And that is really easily debunked. You see, sometimes, unfortunately, we have a lot of armchair um, and Facebook experts who don't read deeply enough. And, and unfortunately, I have to because of the, the, the job I do around this thing. When people talk about this rapid development of the vaccines, they do not understand that these vaccines have been worked on for years. You have heard of SARS, you have heard of Ebola. They are the same family of viruses. And what happened is that the scientists have like a foundation vaccine put aside. And when this new coronavirus, and there are many different types of coronaviruses, all they basically do is use the technology and plug and play. So scientists have learned to use and apply technology. That's why we are doing what we're doing here. I am in Guyana and I can talk to you easily. And many people might not even know where I am, just like minister wasn't thought I was in St. Vincent. So we have to, if we believe in the technology that gives us television and, and um, Wi-Fi and cell service, let us believe in science, the technology that helps science to cure diseases. And some people say, for example, is an inje the injection you're putting in a chip for them to track you down. Well, they won't waste money to do that. You know, they're already doing that. Everybody who uses a, a cell phone, and, and mostly everybody does, can be tracked. Their movements are tracked. So it is, and I say these examples because those are some of the responses you get. It. Yeah. People just find a new reason to refuse. Get them all the time. To... And when you debunk one, they, they come at another one. You know, there, there's always yeah. a reason. Uh, and like they, they, they said they've been waiting on the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah, they were always waiting. And I don't know. Now we have it here. And I want to say, I really want to put in a plug for CARICOM here and the governments of the region. The governments are doing their duty. And I'm not talking about government of Sydney. I said the governments. Right? The governments have a responsibility to provide um, adequate health services. And the governments have been doing a good job at that. We have to work with the governments to mobilize sufficient vaccines. You know, we are one of the few areas that you really, it's, it's, you can hardly say we have a scarcity. In fact, we probably have a surplus and we have had surpluses from time to time. We are not, we don't want to say we have a, a, a absolute surplus because we still will, we still have needs going on. But the governments are doing their part. Society has to do theirs. And there's a responsibility, I think, that people must meet. People are talking about their rights. Yes, everybody has rights, but rights are not absolute. And when the right of an individual to refuse the vaccine infringes on my right and others' rights to be protected from transmission of the viruses, virus, then we have a, we have a, a challenge. And, and the because Constitution I, I, speaks to that? Yeah, I wouldn't want to go to a health facility where the healthcare workers um, may have refused to be vaccinated and run the risk of infecting me. And I don't think it is fair to the person who might object to being seen there. These are some of the challenges we have. I wouldn't want to go in a business where the business did not take enough care in ensuring that persons are um, carrying out the right public health measures to minimize the spread, like putting on a mask where they should. I would not, and I don't think it is fair that um, persons 
should be um, using the fact that they have their rights to refuse being vaccinated, but infringing on the rights of others to safety and, and health. But again, it, it's debatable, but that's my opinion. And I think um, it's a common duty we have to look out for each other. And sometimes we just have to learn, we have to compromise even, even on, on some of our beliefs because beliefs are not necessarily facts. The science are there to show that some of the beliefs being expressed by those who are hesitant are incorrect. The facts, let's deal with objective facts. I know we have a hard challenge. It's, it's difficult not to be frustrated and we can't afford as leaders to be frustrated, but it is really a hard job. Okay, it's been said that um, the great majority of people who remain unvaccinated are young people. What do you say to them to encourage them to make that um, very final and important decision to vaccinate? How, how do we? Well, we, 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 um, we appeal to them in the same way that we appeal to the rest of the population because they are as much as risk, at risk as, as the others. Um, again, we need to reiterate that the, the rights of individuals cannot or not to jeopardize the well-being of the collective, the, 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 entire, the entire society. And um, if you're not affected now as a young person, you will be affected somehow or the other later on. You may not be affected directly. What about your grandmother, your grandfather? What about your children? What about your, your auntie, etc.? because you can transmit the virus. So even if you're not affected, you can transmit it to somebody else and somebody else can get sick as a result of that or even die. So I, I don't see them as divorced from the rest of the society. Everybody's in this thing together. Everybody ought to be as responsible as each other. Okay. And, and, uh, but but um, added to that, if I may, if I may, is that um, this virus is so aggressive that it is not sparing young people as much as the older versions. Um, and because young people are probably among the highest unvaccinated, the figures are showing now that most of the new infections are among young people. Yes, and exactly. Some are, exactly. And they're, they're very mobile. Some are dying. Yeah. They're the yes. mo most mobile and, part of the society. And they, and they should be encouraged to be vaccinated because it frees them up a little as to yes. what they can do. Look at what's happening to our students now. Barbados has just decided that they are not, they're, they're not going to face-to-face -to -face school because they don't have enough course children vaccinated. So they'll be going, continuing virtual education. It is not the optimum. And if students want to enjoy, quote unquote, normal um, experiences in education, if young people want to enjoy going to a party and a fete, they must get vaccinated. Otherwise, the, the policy makers, the politicians, the governments, will maintain curfews and restrictions that will negatively impact on their social life and their economic life, and everybody will be negatively impacted. So look what, these are the look, things that people should look, look at. Look, look what's up around the country. I mean, it's like a graveyard. Young people are not playing, there's no sports. Uh, Socialisation is not taking place in the way it's supposed to be. And I suspect that there's going to be some mental health issues as a result of this. We need to get back to normalcy, not just because we want people to be healthy, but equally because we want the economy to be healthy. It, uh, this thing is affecting education, security, and every fabric, every facet of our society. And we need to get back there because it's a small society. Our pockets are not deep. Our situation is not like a first world country. We can least afford to be out in the, in the doldrums at this time. Okay. And the, the variant is here, actually. Yeah. Uh, three, we have three cases already. We have sent six cases or seven cases, I think, to CAFA to, to check to see if they if they of that variant. So we 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 heading there. Okay. Yep. All right. It's really a challenge, and and I really appeal appeal to my fellow citizens to while we understand and appreciate you may have concerns, but try to weigh yeah. the balance of the facts um, that is shared to you. Many of you trust your doctors without questioning what medication they give you. You trust them. Please trust them with the vaccines. It is good for you. It is good for your family. It is good for everybody. It's good for the community. We need to get back 
to as normal as possible. Mm -hmm. You need to, but some of you have lost your jobs because of COVID, the shutdowns, business cannot sustain full employment because if you can't go to parties, you, um, you got, people can't, commerce is affected. Mm -hmm. And other things. And we, let's, let's, let's try not to be selfish because some people feel, and, and I happen to agree with them, that a bit of selfishness in wanting to a lot. over emphasize your personal rights for the common good of community. I mean... Okay, Doc, we'll take our second break and come back in just a moment. on the VC3 News update, persons hoping to have events and wish to exceed the amount for indoor or outdoor gatherings must seek approval from the CMO or the Commissioner of Police. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has received a shipment of personal protective equipment procured through funding from the European Union and the Ministry of National Mobilization with responsibility for social protection of the poor and vulnerable launches its social protection policy consultation process. We'll have these stories and more coming up at 7 p.m. on the VC3 News Update. Friday, September 3rd, there'll be thousands of dollars to be won. A lotto jackpot of $90,000. A new home, car, or that college education. Lotto, you have to be in it to win it. Next, lotto jackpot, $90,000. Welcome back. Uh, Minister, I think one of the things that I have noticed is that we seem to be uh, to have become um, less compliant. Um, I think there was a, a, a time and period when people were in fact adhering to protocols much more than they are now. It seems as though everybody has gone back yes. to normal. It's, it's, it's like nine, 2019. What do you think is responsible for this kind of um, attitude currently? I think it's because people are not taking the thing seriously. And as I said before, because we don't have the problems like Trinidad or Barbados or the other islands where we, they're locked down, you have curfew, states of emergency, etc. Um, where we're wearing of masks in certain countries, mand mandatory. Um, these things have allowed people to become complacent, I think. Uh, in addition to that, the fact that they are listening to a lot of talk around the place that COVID not there, uh, strong arm could get rid of that, you know. Um, but we have been looking at it in the Ministry of Health, and there are a number of things that we have been, we've been noticing and we are concerned about. The increasing positivity rates, which I said before. However, the decreasing compliance with masks use, physical distancing, hand sanitization, etc. Some churches, for instance, they do what they have to do. Others just don't care. You just walk in for a funeral or a wedding or whatever it is, and you do as you like. Um, low vaccine uptake, of course, you've been hammering that for the longest while. Um, people, some people were saying they didn't want the AstraZeneca. They're waiting on the Sputnik. The Sputnik came. And they said they're waiting on the Pfizer, but the Pfizer is here. Um, we only have an uptake of about 600, just over 600 for the time being. That's not bad, but I think it should be better. Um, disinformation continues on the radio and Facebook, etc. People who should know better are influencing people who, who don't care to read and to educate themselves, etc. Uh, so these are some of the concerns that we have. And I think it is because we are in a position where the hospital is not being overwhelmed, where people are not getting sick, where we, we have not seen more than 12 deaths. But those people, those 12 people who have died, they have families who are worried about it. 
the others who are selfish and say, well, I, they affect me, so let me just continue as usual. Those are the ones we are worried about, you know. And we have a, a coming up, we have a, um, a long weekend. Uh, I hope that the police will be vigilant to go around and make sure that we don't have a, a, a super spreader anywhere on the beaches or the riversides or wherever it is. Um, people who want to have these things, we've been, to, we've, we've been telling them to get permission from the police and from the Ministry of Health before they do, ensure that people are vaccinated, etc. So we worry about this weekend a little bit, um, but we are trying to put things in place. Okay. There's a comment here, somebody saying, I wonder why you go to the hospital when you get COVID, if you don't believe in doctors and vaccines about the virus. <laughs> yeah, doctor, you <laughs> care to respond? <laughs> <laughs> That's well, I go. tell you, I find it's a, a fair question. If you don't believe that uh, when the doctors tell you to pre take a vaccine to prevent the illness, why, why should you rush to them after? But again, I mean, that's their right. But I am glad the question came now because the reason why the public health, the governments, are asking you to get vaccinated. One of the reasons, apart from to protect your health, is that big outbreak can overwhelm the health systems. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean in overwhelm? That is, you can't manage. And you know what? Some of the same persons who don't want to vaccinate now, they will be the first to criticize. Government yes. not high enough oxygen. Yes. Government not high enough bed. The hospital not big enough. They're not high enough people walking. But guess what? In all countries, including very rich countries that have more resources, because they have not vaccinated, they become overwhelmed. The United States of America is the richest country. Right now, as we speak, there are several states that run out of oxygen. And therefore, just imagine, we have an ICU with about four to six beds. Normally, you only have about two patients there, and it is very costly to operate an ICU, that is an intensive care unit. So most countries do not have a whole ton loads of beds preparing for what they normally won't get. Now, if you have an outbreak and four or five persons get seriously ill with COVID, you are overwhelmed. And then, Persons who are sick with other regular illnesses, including, say, an asthmatic attack that might need ICU service, how are they going to determine who to give priority to? Now, some people might say, well, who now here should feel? We can't, you can't, it's not as easy as that. But it is that we are trying to prevent by encouraging people. And they always say, a ounce of prevention better than a whole pong or ton of cure. Vaccines have been found in medical history to be the most effective investment in healthcare, the best bang for your buck. We all and almost everybody who are who, um, refusing to vaccinate now have been vaccinated to go to school and it was man it is mandatory. This is just this just happens to be another such disease that is reaching to that point. So I really don't understand sometimes when I hear the arguments about nobody should be forced to take a vaccine. Well, all of us have been, if you don't want to use the force, but we can't go to school if you didn't take the vaccine. And parents should be aware of that because you want your children to have the best education. I want to appeal to parents and to the students to encourage their parents to take them to get vaccinated so that they can be in a position to receive and benefit from the education system because that's the future of our country. And if only for that, and you said earlier, the young people should really be vaccinated because they are much more active than adults and can spread the virus more easily. It is true that generally they have not been getting a seriously ill, but that is changing with Delta mm -hmm. and may change to an, any other variant that may come forward. We don't want to have our young people dying out, nobody at all, but especially with, uh, the future of our countries. And so I, I, I don't know what more I can say 
there's enough information. Some people say there's no, they don't have enough information. Oh, that is not true. For those who really want reliable information, it exists. But some people prefer to listen, as I said, to the pseudo or false experts out there that giving uh, to misinformation and causing injury to innocent people who don't fully understand what's happening. So all of us need to step up to the table and do what we need to do to encourage the acceptance of the vaccines, to make St. Vincent and the Grenadines a healthier place, to make you, your family, and the community a safer place at a lot lower cost. Because if we have to start dying, and it seems as if some people, only when people start dropping die like, dead like, like falls, they might start to rush, as in some countries. I'll tell you, in Jamaica, I saw a line and a, a comment where they said, why me never see so much people line up for even go to champs? Now, the athletic tank competition in Jamaica is a big thing. Tens of thousands of people. And they, they are saying a few prominent people have died from it, including the wife of a very prominent politician. And the, 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 the politician was the only one in the family that was vaccinated. Everybody else got it and his wife died. We have seen on TV, many of the right wing commentators in the United States who trash the vaccines. Many of them are dying now. And some of their followers are now getting the message. We don't want to have to go through that. Why should we? Let us show that we, we can assimilate information, determine what is good and what makes sense and take the right decision for yourselves, for the country. We okay. really need to do So a couple of comments um, I want to read. The first, selfishness is the overriding factor here. Yes, you may have the right to choose to be unvaccinated, but you don't have the right to infect or kill others in the society. Mm -hmm. And someone else is saying, penalize business places that are in breach of the protocols. Is there any provision for penalization? Well, I suppose it's a legal issue. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't see any immediately. Um, the, the government has not looked at that in any, in any great detail. But I suppose in the common law, there is something that could penalize people. But I don't know to what extent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, someone says, I think we need to address our emergency communications regulations, especially in a multimedia environment, multiple radio and TV stations, and social media. That is how we will combat misinformation. I, I tend to agree. Um, how has the government appealed to the nurses to get vaccinated? Is it just like everyone else, or have there been sessions with them? I do believe unless you get the nurses to believe in the vaccine you will always have a problem with the average man nurses represent a local trust within communities on health issues yeah man we've had a number of um, sessions with nurses small group sessions um people from the, the ministry people from outside of the ministry speaking to them in small groups they what the, 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 the advantages are, are of vaccination. In fact, teaching them about vaccinations generally. All right, there has been that. We, of course, we expect them to know more than the ordinary person because they work in the health service, you know. Are we surprised? Um, they study the science. Exactly. And I have been taken aback by the fact that so many nurses did not take it and did not want to take it because they themselves believe in the misinformation out there. Um, I, I, I think that recently, though, a few more of them have been taking it. We think we've gone up from about... 25 percent about 32 percent of them at the hospital who have taken the, the vaccine um there's some of them who have resigned to go overseas and they have taken it even if they didn't want to take it while they were here i don't understand the logic there um but it has been it's very unfortunate uh, and i've said before publicly that i'm disappointed in the in the low uptake among nurses i'm not bashing them really because some of them genuinely believe that they're going to die in two years time or they uh, or they wouldn't be fertile or, or that kind of talk uh, they have been influenced by by a number of people including their own unions all right uh, but i think that um if we continue to push and we will continue to push to get them up to up to par we, we, we will we will reach somewhere which is not so as embarrassing as it is now okay we'll take our final break and come back in just a moment. I am Hans John. 
2019 Vinci Raga Soka Muna. I took the COVID-19 vaccine and so should you. Let's be an example to others. Get vaccinated today and help control the spread of COVID-19. Vaccinate, vaccinate if you want to eliminate the spread of the virus in our place and do not procrastinate. But rather let us vaccinate. Get vaccinated today. Coming up on the VC3 News Update, persons hoping to have events and wish to exceed the amount for indoor or outdoor gatherings must seek approval from the CMO or the Commissioner of Police. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has received the shipment of personal protective equipment procured through funding from the European Union and the Ministry of National Mobilization with responsibility for social protection of the poor and vulnerable launches its social protection policy consultation process. We'll have these stories and more coming up at 7 p.m. on the VC3 News Update. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I want us to look at the Public Health Amendment Act because there seem to be quite a bit of misunderstanding um, relative to what are the main provisions and what the Act sets out to do. Take yeah. us through. Okay, I, but a lot of this is in the public domain already. We, we, we went to Parliament to amend the Public Health Act um, and it was just too pieces that we looked at particularly one where we removed the word voluntary because in a pandemic in a state of in a, an emergency a public health emergency um, the 1977 act said that there should be uh, an inoculation campaign but in i think in 19, 2005 there was some amendment that put voluntary in front of that now if you if, if you're saying in an emergency it's a voluntary um inoculation campaign it doesn't make any sense because people just say okay we, we don't have to do anything all right so we had to put some teeth in it and also because we wanted to to protect our frontline workers and at the same time we wanted the people whom they serve to be protected from them if they're not vaccinated because you can't tell me that you're providing a service as vital as this people come in as patients and you're not vaccinated you, you, you may be able to spread it to them or you may get it from them, whatever it is. So we tried, so, so this was not really to, to take away people's freedom or to, to interfere with or violate their conscience, etc. It's just to protect them and to protect the people, the society. That's what we did. Another part to it was that we said you have exemptions and exemptions um, on the basis of medical or basis of religion. But if it's, if it's medical, then a doctor has to say that you're unwell. But then we won't just take the doctor's word. We have to get the uh, few other doctors who we think are competent enough to say, all right, this man is competent to say that you're unwell in this particular area. And let's look at it again, because you know that can happen. In fact, it happens where people peddle these things, you know. You go to a doctor, I'm going to be sick next week, Wednesday, give me, give me um, some, some sick leave. No, I worked in the system for so long, I know it happens. All right, and we can play the fool with this kind of situation, an emergency like that. So we said we have to have a panel of doctors that will oversee that. This is not to make the CMO a super doctor because the CMO is just the overall person. But we're going to have people who are competent to look at it and to make the assessment. Um, also, you have an exemption in terms of religion. If you're working with somebody, well, uh, in this case, in, in the public service, and you say, listen, I have a, a particular religion which says that I ought not to take it. We're going to say, all right, let's move you to somewhere else because you can't be on the front line. All right, if we can't accommodate you somewhere else, then you're going to have to find somewhere else to go. Because what we're trying to do is to keep people safe. Now, what is the, what really is the responsibility of government is to keep the nation safe. We can't just sit back and say, all right, we have an emergency. And who dead, dead, who mash up Choi? We can't do that as government. Maybe as a private citizen, people could say that. But as a government, we have that responsibility and we have to carry it out if we have to govern properly in the interest of the people. 
Okay, someone is saying, uh, someone I, uh, who we know, I saw a picture today of a Jamaican hospital in dire straits. COVID patients together on the floor and they have run out of oxygen. Is SVG prepared for this? Do we have the ability to produce oxygen in country, etc.? I see that we have just received um, PPE. Well, we, we, have, we have the ability to, to produce oxygen in some venues, yes. But does anybody have the ability to meet the, the, the requirements of a pandemic like this? Not even in the United States or wherever else. I, he saw a picture in Jamaica. There are pictures all around the world where hospitals are challenged, where governments are challenged, where the state governments, or federal governments, etc., are challenged. Because you cannot, if there is a real break, you cannot respond positive, um, well, appropriately all the time. But we will try to do what we have that to is do. What I, that is what I alluded to earlier. Yes. We do not want to reach that point, and we should not. And people have to understand that there are limitations to the ability of governments, especially small, poor governments like yes. the Caribbean countries, and St. Vincent is no exception. So you have to be efficient and you have to be effective. So how you do that? Prevention is better than cure. It is cheaper. So you invest in vaccines and governments have had to do that. And in, in PPEs and getting more um, isolated, but you can never be prepared fully for a serious outbreak because you don't know how many numbers they'll be coming. And you don't want to go and spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to buy things that you may not need and you don't have to need them if you vaccinate. So people that you don't have. understand that as the minister has said, one of the first responsibilities of government is to provide healthcare to protect their citizens. And I think governments have been doing a good job at that generally and but the society has a responsibility to play their role because it's their tax money, you know. The, the, the money that is used and has to be diverted to go and spend and buying extra oxygen and all that. It's not the prime minister or the minister money. It's the taxpayers have to pay it. So why, in fact, one may see that as a waste if you don't have to spend it on that. You could spend it to fix the roads and to do other things. But our citizens have to understand that and do their part. Regarding the legislation, a lot of people don't understand the power of public health legislation. And I know I have discussed with some governments, some people don't even go to the parliament, they just tell the, the, the CMO has some powerful, um, some powers behind them. And institution, gives allowance to special conditions where individual rights can be and may be superseded. And in this case, in a pandemic, that's why one of the reasons why the WHO took so long to declare COVID a, a, a disease of global importance and a pandemic, because once you have declared that, it causes sometimes the suspension of individual rights because in a pandemic, a government can use certain mandatory measures. Now I understand the government doesn't want to just jump into that. They want to appeal to the reason of its citizens. But if the citizens are not reasonable, it, pollu it, 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 it produces a dilemma. And the government is forced to make a decision in the interest of the majority of the common, of, of, um, for the common good. And I don't think governance, any government really want to do that. That's why they are using campaigns to encourage people to do what on the balance of things is the right thing to do. Get vaccinated, prevent all the complications that we have been seeing and reading about. Be wise, get vaccinated, please. Okay, someone is saying we need to redouble our efforts to educate and inform the target population of incentions who have refused to take the vaccine. Folks who are spreading misinformation should be ashamed since the people who may end up suffering and dying are usually the poor 
or uneducated. Yep. Yep. And I hope I hope that they, is... they, these people take responsibility for, for what they can do. All right. Because they're influencing people um, in the wrong direction. And I hope that when things happen, um, they will take the responsibility. The latter part is so correct that unfortunately those of those who may suffer are the less educated, yeah. the the poor, and uh, you know, the, the, the and 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 that some people who know better, some people who even have been vaccinated, yes, but just create disturbance. Some people, and it is true, there are persons who yes, they are being vaccinated, but for various reasons which I won't get into, um, people believe they must make it more difficult for authorities to get the job done. And um, regarding redoubling, what you're doing now is part of that redoubling of the efforts to inform and educate. I want persons who see me and hearing me, see me as Dr. Dougie Slater, a public health professional, and not necessarily Dr. Dougie Slater, a former politician because we get caught up in some of these things too much. And we need to separate what is facts and what is, from what is belief. And I, 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 I want all Vincentian to, to understand the importance of vaccination because this virus is colorblind. It doesn't see yellow or red or blue. It, it, it sees unvaccinated. Good, I'm coming for you. And we don't want to lose our loved ones. We don't want to lose, even if it's people quote unquote don't like, we don't want to lose you because you mean something to your family. You might be the main winner. You might be the person who has a special skill. And we want that, that, that is important to the development of your community and to your nation. We want you to remember that 12 persons have thus far died yep. from COVID. The family of those 12 persons have lost loved ones, the auntie, the mother, the, the, the sister, the brother. We don't want any more to suffer unnecessarily. And I believe if you don't get in vaccinated and you get infected and die, there is an unnecessary death. Why do we have to do, do um, allow that? I don't think we have to, please. Let us understand that we are all working towards helping all of us to protect ourselves. It is not new, vaccinations are not new. And if so many of us have done it, at least give a little credit to our judgment. People you have trusted with other aspects of your life have done it. The two, as far as I know, the two political leaders have done it. Yep. Them and their families. That must be a strong signal. Many or most doctors, many religious leaders have done it. These are the people you trust. Why do you, why are you playing so obstinate and playing with death? No man, we can't, we, we, it's not, there's too much to lose. Your, your family immediately and then the society, please. And I think that's a perfect note, Dr. Slater, on which to end this evening's edition of Roundtable Talk. Thank you both. Dr. Slater, continue to stay safe down there in Guyana. Thank you, Minister, as usual, and Thank you. Um, all the best. Thank you. Have a very good evening. Thank you for viewing Roundtable Talk. Good evening. Thank you.